Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's special event. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And we are joined once again by Mark Cohen of Digital Diamond Baseball. Mark, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And so you just released just the other day version 11 of Digital Diamond Baseball. And uh, so how, how did that go? Tell us a little bit about that. It, it was a, it's been a busy month, um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, you know, a lot of beta testing, well, a lot of programming first and then a lot of beta testing. And then um, lots of questions, you know, in the last uh, two days, uh, people um, wanting some help or having some ideas. So it's been quite busy. Um, and you guys were part of that beta test. So, you know, that there was, you know, what did we do about 10 days worth of that? Seven to 10 days. You were getting out of beta a day. I think. Yeah. The- yeah. Yeah. You were cranking those out. Yeah. It's, it was a very busy uh, couple of months. So it, it's nice to have a little bit of a break and, you know, it's yeah. frustrating because I, I love, I love playing this game, but the, the, there just wasn't a lot of time. Um, what, uh, well, we've had Kerry Batts on before, who's the creator of Pro Strategy Football. He ha- he always has a very definitive date where the last version ends and work on the new version begins. What is that for you? What, what's the hard cutoff? That's a really good question. Uh, it's not a hard cutoff, but I usually try to follow the baseball season. So the release happens on opening day and then – you know, late September, um, I try to cut it off and then start developing. I know you were issuing patches as late as February for that, but, you know, there, the point that no new features were really putting in, except for last year was the board game companion, which came out of the middle of nowhere. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, I get I get suggestions all year long, and, um, you know, it, it, it's, they're good. <laughs> so... <laughs> What was the uh, what was the idea in version ten of putting in a board game companion? Like, where, where did that idea come from? It's a good question. You know, it's something that customers had been recommending or suggesting for a while, um, and I, you know, I didn't quite get it um, in the beginning. Um, it took me a while, really, to to get get to terms with it, and mm-hmm. they kept hammering it, and hammering me on the head with it, and finally, I said, you know, maybe this this makes a lot of sense. And um, they were right. Uh, it was a big, a really big addition. And I, li- I like playing dice and card baseball, but I never got that into it because of all the overhead and keeping right. track of all the stats and, and not being able to play long seasons because you, it's just too much to keep all those stats. Um, so I didn't play much. You know, I had some cards, but I didn't play much. And as soon as I put this in, that, that's when I got it. I was like, you know, th- this was a great suggestion. It just revolutionized my my um, baseball board game life, and uh, now I I play a lot um, thanks to the game. So that was customer driven, and uh, it took them a, a few times to to get it into my head. So what was the impetus for you to get Status Pro in? Good question. Uh, the biggest reason is because it's free. It's open source. Yes. So I couldn't do it with many other games. Uh, it had to be one that was free and available. I, I think Hal would be knocking on your door if you tried to put Strat in, into it. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> I would deserve it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that was a big reason. Another reason is I like, I really like playing it. It um, It's fast. You know, it, it's a quick. Yes. Uh, a quick game to play so you can f- focus more on the gameplay and less on a lot of rules and and monkeying around. I did a game today, 11-inning uh, game between Oakland and California, 24 minutes. Wow, that's um, pretty good. And so cuz there's no there's no bust, there's no fuss and when you change the card comes up and so for a game that I had never played before to yeah. be doing that to yeah i want to figure out what i want to do for project that's pretty good yeah yeah that, that's pretty good it's very well thought of and and uh did you have the pitch clock on that game or did i have the pitch clock on that game well for uh for 11 inning game that oakland could not hang, hold the lead two or three times to be done in 24 minutes was it the <laughs> mets and the marlins played two hours and nine minutes last night and now i've been looking at the times it's just lovely i'm great. loving it oh i'm, yeah. I'm loving it's it great. So you don't don't need a pitch clock. Maybe a card, 
a card counter that you can't flip more than four or five cards yeah, yeah, per play. Yeah, but yeah. There you go. There you yeah. go. So I, I do want to get into status pro in a little bit, but uh, let's talk about the, uh, the the building of version 11, uh, at least from when we came on. And so so we got the first beta out, and uh, it come and quite honestly, I I, I talked to Ron. It's Ron. I says I like ten way better. I says I think he's going backwards here. He changed a lot of things that blah blah blah. There's some things I like, some things they didn't. And then three versions later, eleven blew away ten. Ooh. And I don't know what it was that changed. I think it was some of the codes that were in there I was having problems with. Things that I, I was used to in 10 weren't working in 11. And you got those working. And every time I sent you off an email, I'm like, yeah. I was like man, how do I say this in a nice way? You know, I, but I want this to be great. I do. And I'm so I'm like, OK, could you maybe do this? Or, you know, I missed this. And, and and then boom, 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 boom. It's like everything we were talking to you about, you were so receptive. Thank you. Yeah. About this to a Thank point you. where w- when the final version of the, the, the release 11 come out, it had pretty much everything I had asked for in yeah. it, either either whether it was a change or an addition or uh, to, any, any little thing in there. Uh, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, you were so receptive and, you know, we didn't ask you to, to change the world or anything by any means. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but I remember talking to Ron, I was like, Ron, I says, I think I like 10 better. I'm so used to it and everything works. And, but by the time 11 come out, 11 is just so much better. And that, that was not even including the status pro. That was just, you know, the regular stuff in there. And um, I like how, so some of the changes, so you've shrunk the screen down yeah. And then you've you've added more stuff, and we're going to show some screenshots in a minute here. So, so what? So, what are some of the big changes here about eleven? Sure, and just to comment on what you just said, thank you for that. I think, you know, I'm just one person with my one view in the world, and and everybody who plays this game has a slightly different view. Of course, and you do. and so I'm I'm ready when I start showing it to other people. I know that there's going to be some good ideas out there, and they, and they got to get my own viewpoint out of this and get lots of other viewpoints in so that's exactly what the beta is very good for is getting getting other people to look at this thing and, and tell me what's going on and, th- and it was all very valuable um it's a smaller screen uh you know it's it's been a f- over the last four versions it's been a fight between big big ballpark little stats more stats less ballpark it's just uh, a constant I, I, I like what you did. And if people haven't seen the game, and again, we'll show this in a bit, is that the pitcher and the batter's stats are now on the screen, and it shows uh, real-life replay playoff and what they've done in that game, like that, and what they've done in that game. And so although it's, it's about a three-quarter screen for that, plus the lineups below, I just think having that information, although how did you do that, Dave, where you don't have the playoff stats on the screen? Uh, in the options. So mm-hmm. if, if, if I go back to the game here and I go into my menu and I think it's option. There's three sets of options now, by the way. There's your right. basic, there's your fonts and your colors, and then there's the batter picture stats. So if I click on the batter picture stats, uh, I can put all types, real life, real life play. So I, I don't. Oh. Really so I don't care about the playoffs at this point. So I, yeah. I'm going to go real life simulated. Sometimes, I must, I think it's, sometimes I just go was. simulated. So if I click that, now it's just going to give me, you know, what, what's going on in my replay, and I don't have to care. But but sometimes I do like to go to my basic, and I like to oh, 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 wrong one here. Uh, go into my batter picture stats, and I do like to see what they did in real life. So I have an idea, like where they are. You know, okay, yeah. and I know this is game one of the season, so there's not much to look at here. But I, I re- but I didn't realize I, I could change that. I do like that. Um, and and the other thing you're gonna notice here is there's no more guessing on pinch hitting and pinch running. Yes, it yeah. says it right below the guy here. There's a button for it. Now, yeah. is there is there something else you can click for that too, or do you have to click right on the pinch hit and pitch run? You have to click on the pinch hit or pinch run. Okay, so if I just click on the guy, it's just gonna bring up. His bring up the stats, right? Okay. Oh, I see. So it changes over here on the right. So let's take a look at Reggie Jackson, and that's going to have his stats, even though he's not at the plate right I, now. I don't see any is. hot dogs on that. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the different view. So what you're going to see is the pitcher over here, Jim Bibby, and his stats over here on the left, and you got Bert Campanaris, who's at the plate over here, and he's uh, today is 0 for 0, no to, no plate appearances. So you're gonna you're gonna have all the stats here. Now that's something that you had to click on 
in the last version, correct? That was not on the screen. That's right. And that's the trade-off. <clears throat> People wanted a big baseball field, but they didn't want to have to click to see other other stats. So it was, you know, something had to give. And I think that overwhelmingly, I think the, the users wanted to see more stats and they were willing to make that trade-off. Uh, it For me personally, it just makes those managerial decisions easier when it's just yeah. displayed right. And Richard Beach says the same thing to have that information right in front of you. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I like that. I like to see like what the pitch has done today, how many strikeouts and what the batter's done and, and, and how he's doing it. Everything's right there. So I do like that. First, I was like, hmm, I like my big field, but now I, I liked having the stats because the field's still there. You don't need it to be that big. Yeah. So uh, that's the first thing I noticed here when you go into the game. Now, as far as the status pro, people ask how you do it. Well, if you go into basic mode, uh, you would probably start off like this. This is how it would look. Uh, you have a chart here talking about uh, Sal Bando, who's at the plate right now. I just sped up the game, by the way. So if you were to see uh, – so now on the left, uh, it shows you that the pitcher is now Terpco. He's pitching innings. He's got two Ks. He's faced three batters. And Sal Bando's 0 for 2. He's got a walk in a run. And uh, in the first, he's got a walk. Now, this R6, I've been meaning to ask you about that. Sometimes yeah. I see these things uh, after the batter. What, what, what are those – as, as a baseball newbie, what, are, what is that? That's a good question. The um, R6 is saying that they scored a run, and the 6 is telling us what batter was up when he scored that run. Okay. Okay. Um, it would have been Joe Rudy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, Joe Rudy, yep, put him in. Yeah, yeah okay. Joe Rudy, and he should have an RBI probably. Um, so that just gives you a little idea. Same thing happens with stolen bases, I think, so you can tell who was up when somebody stole a base as well. Okay, so I love going to the scorecard so I can yeah. see that. Yeah. So, um, and there's a good one there for a Johnson in the third. So he got out on base. That's what that X is, and he was out when the bat, number eight batter was up. Okay, so uh, Fossey hit a ground ball one four three into a DP. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I I do like I, this is my favorite part. I love looking at the scorecard here. I really yeah. do. You know, I do too. And, and, and I like how it's over here on the right hand side. Uh, and even this over here in the fourth inning, uh, a fly out is that FO if is that how FO fall out or fly out? It's a foul out, it's it's confusing because um, I think the command is <clears throat> FO, and okay. now I have FO for the fly out. I tried to be consistent strike out, fly out, line out with FO, LO, um, and SO or K. and uh, there was this one inconsistency with foul out. So that is a little confusing. But I do like how it, it, um, it does tell you that it's a fly out or a fall out to a, uh, uh, actually fly out eight would be center field. So I do like that too. I like that you've, you've added that there. That was one of my requests actually was. Yes, it was. Yep. Could you, could you put where it goes? Cause it, you know, fl a fly out great, but I mean, it's, it's nice to know like where he hit it. Is he spraying the ball around that day or, you know, is yeah. he hitting it to one guy over and over and over? So I do like that. So again, if you wanted to put the status pro and play it on here, you would go to your menu, your options, and you would just click on true for status pro. And now you got the lefty righty splits over here on this side. I always go lefty righty is, you know, does that talk about the lefty righty option for a second? You know, everyone's got a different opinion about that. I like the lefty righty, um, except when Ryan Howard comes up against the left handed pitcher. Then I, <laughs> but, uh, I think it adds a little realis realism, and um, I like that. Uh, but you know, sometimes I'll play combined too, um, both are fun. Okay, now, one thing I didn't know. And Ron brought this up, and I don't know how he knows it, you know, he must have inside information. Is sure. that, um, the game generates the status pro cards kind of on the fly. That's right. That's correct. That's why you can do it for any season. Uh, it just generates them on the fly. And the beauty of, of uh, status pro is that they made the, the, the uh, rules for generating these cards uh, public. Okay. So the, the recipe was right there sitting on the internet waiting for somebody to, to write a program that would generate the cards uh, dynamically. 
Nice. Now, R Rodolfo here says, I'd like to see some improvements in the page with the standings and the stats. So, Rodolfo, what I would like to do is uh, expand on that a little bit. What do you mean some improvements? What would you be looking for on the standings and stats page? In fact, what I'll try to do is uh, we'll, we'll go take a look at that standings and stats page right now. And uh, I don't have much going on, so I'm going to go into my 1979, which I've been playing uh, a lot of here. So, now, standings and stats, would that be season – Overview, you think? He's either talking about reports or season overview. I'm not sure which. So here's the season overview screen. And so it's got the standings here. And if you scroll down, it has the batting leaders for the American League and then the, the national batting leaders. And then you got your pitching leaders. And I didn't know this scroll down, by the way, in version 10. Someone, okay. someone said. Scroll down. I was like, what do you mean scroll down? Oh, look at all this stuff. This is great. Uh, so you get some MVP boats. Who's hot at the plate? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. If you scroll all the way down. Uh, will Fred Lynn continue his hot hitting? Boy, this is neat. So this is games to watch. Tell us about games to watch. Well, you can click on those. It'll take you right to the game. <clears throat> and it basically tries to find games that have players that are currently playing well or doing something interesting. And it recommends those games to you. Really? So, so, oh, well, okay. So this is seven thirty one. This one's here. Cardinals at Cubs at eight. Five. Now would that speed me up to that game and sim the that's rest a, of the games? That's a good question. I don't know. No, those games have already been played. Yeah. That's, they shouldn't be there. That's a bug. <laughs> Thank okay. You, so we have recent highlights. Yep. So, so we're in the August right now. So games to watch. Okay. So make a note on that. We'll check out to see what, uh, what's going on with the games to watch. Let me get back all the way up to the top here. We got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so now we're back here. So, so I'm not sure. Like I said, let me see if Rodolfo's uh, written back to us at we all. We've been talking about the reports, which does, which do okay. need some work. Okay. Um, and Dwayne Martz says they had a form in the back of the rule book for Status Pro Baseball, the board game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a um, couple things. Uh, if you have any questions um, for Mark, let us know. Can you view and print the status pro class? I don't think you can. Uh, that's I, a great question. You cannot yet. Uh, it's okay. definitely something that I wanted to get done for version 11 and did not make it. Um, but it's definitely still on the table uh, to happen. So I would like to be able to generate PDF of those cards so people can print them and cut them out. And uh, what was the other thing you said? Print them out. Oh, view them. Also, um, in the player pop-up, when you click on a player, you get a detailed player pop-up. I'm going to have the... Status, uh, status pro cards for that player show up in that pop oh, nice. so you can see them outside of the game or if they're not happen to be in the game okay so i'm gonna go back into the game that yep. was playing earlier all right so now if you're saying if i click on uh the player at the plate let's say yeah you can do that yep okay so i click on this so this this here you think about having that show up you see the event tables uh, tab on the right side Click on that. So that shows your, it's um, lefty, righty, and combined traditional engine um, chart, right, for dice rolls. And uh, the idea is to have the, the ability to scroll down and see the, the um, stat, oh. status pro cards there combined left and right, just like okay. you see these other ones. Okay. So now, actually, speaking about that right there, so if I go here and I turn off status pro, and uh, where is the um... outcome? It's top left. Top left outcome entry. Uh, no, there was. I was looking for the uh, that chart there. I have that turned off. Hide oh, complete um, cards. Is that is that it right there? Hide complete cards. Yes. Is that it right there? Nope, that's not that it. Hides okay. it so you want to, You have to go to the auto dice um, mode first. Top left. Yep. Uh, either the auto auto dice visible would be uh, okay. Okay. Whatever so that mode has dice rolling in it. All right. Oh. I'm not still. I'm not getting you to come up. Oh, maybe because I'm playing in board game companion. Oh yeah, and let's I, take a look at the stat, uh, the uh, options again. All right, so I go back to my options. So no day visible. Um, show notes, hide cards. cards. True. Oh, uh, I don't know why that's not showing up. Auto dice visible. I base. I selected cards. board game companion when I started this game, so maybe I'm locked in. Uh, try um, try switching that outcome entry again to manual uh, dice roll. Let's see what that does. 
It could be you have to throw a pitch to get that to show up. I'm not sure why it's not yeah. coming up. All right, so we'll just give him a strikeout. No, nope. oh, I don't know why that's not showing up here. Fonts and colors? No, you had no. it right where you were. Maybe go back there. Go back to the uh, auto dice visible. Mini lineups. Status quo. Exit out of the game and come back in. Let's see if it comes up in. All right, so we'll go resume. Hmm. I'm still so, uh, maybe because I selected board game companion when I started. Yeah, there's the game. something we're missing here. It probably could be, it could but it could be that you should be able to switch back though. Try a new game. Let's see what the new game. Yeah. All righty. So um, let's do this. Uh, I'll just I'll just go a different library. I'll go back to my seventy four, and we'll play a scheduled game. And we'll try this one here. And I haven't put the logos in here yet. Okay, so uh, uncheck we'll, that. Yeah. Should should I keep that check to try this again, or should I uncheck that? What do you want to do? Let's try it unchecked first, and then we okay. can come back and try it the other way. Okay, and we'll just play ball. Okay, so now I need to get get rid of Status Pro. And let's see if. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to play with that and see what's going on. There's something funny going there. Okay. But there's, so, there's your dice charge. Okay. So uh, so the left is the combined, and then the, it's it, then it's lefty righty. Is that how you have this set up? It's left is pitcher, uh, right is uh, batter, and the combined cards in the middle. So if you click pitch right now, and then swing, you'll see the dice actually roll, and in the middle in the combined one. Uh, you get three dice rolls by default, and then the event happens. Okay. So if you want to, yeah, if you want to play digital diamond baseball, this is what you're going to do with that. Yeah. And then, and then if you want to, like I say, go back up to your basic. If you want to go back into uh, the status pro and mm -hmm. blah 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 blah. There you go. What changes did you make to your game between ten and eleven? Uh, digital diamond. It, to, digi to digital diamond baseball. What? Yeah, your actual games, not just the companion and the status pro. Uh, oh, um, uh, good question. A huge, huge change. It was the biggest change ever made to the traditional game engine ever. Um, we converted it to uh, a, tri a chart-driven game engine. So uh, Digital Diamond Baseball now in the traditional you know, Stratomatic or Diamond Mind Baseball mode, um, it follows a series of dice rolls and lookups on charts. Mm -hmm. And those charts are visible inside the game you can see what they are and you can change them so if you say you know what there's just not enough fly balls there's something wrong with your game there's not enough fly balls they can go and change that now um, so at the very least it gives you a very good understanding about how the game engine works but even better if you don't like the way it works you can change pretty much any facet that you like of the game. okay could you do that with status pro we get a ton of pop outs to the catcher in status pro is that locked in that's such a great question because we just had a just had a discussion about that on the um, on the message forum today. Uh, you're spot on. Status Pro should have that same transparency. And when I put it in there, I wasn't really sure what should be configurable and what sh what should be configurable. So there's very few options there. But the idea is that um, users should be able to go in there and, and tweak it. Now the default I want the default to be just like the, the card game was, and that's how it's set up. And the card game itself had too many pop-ups as well. Um, but that's how it plays. I used all the probabilities that were right out of the, out of the card game. So um, we'll see in the next couple of months more options coming in to allow people to configure the status pro card generation. Algorithm. It's amazing how many pop-ups of the catcher get transferred to a ground ball to short. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's something that a lot of people have done. And again, it, it happens in the card game as well. Um, but I actually kind of like the idea that you were faithful to the card game, that, that you know, we knew it had warts, and it certainly was. A, I looked it up on Wikipedia today because I do owe a couple of videos, once on Status Pro and once on your one on your game. And it was invented really as a dice game and then converted into a fast action card game because yeah. I figured that, okay, late 70s, early computers and all that, ooh, eight, 11 to 88, but uh, – yeah. 
I know that's but, crazy. You know, and so when I see things that I mean, there's also way too many ground outs to the pitcher. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's like, no, you just kind of take it as that would have been how you would have played. No one in 1980 would have cared about that. Yeah. Maybe they would have, but they would have just t told their neighbor or whatever. So <laughs> go back to the chat here. So, um, Rodolfo, uh, when he was talking about the uh, the improvements there, he says uh, the, the season overview screen, the, and the information is great. It's just spoiled with the uh, layout of Action PC because it shows all the information on one screen without having to scroll. Yeah. Uh, so, um, And then he just says uh, he's probably just nitpicking. He really loves digital diamond baseball and use it for all the cards and dice games. So, yeah. I think that's, um, a good, that's a good good comment. There is definitely a lot of scrolling that goes on on that page. Yeah. At the same time, uh, when you get older and your eyes don't work so well, um, that the big presentation is is handy too. So yeah. it's something that really someday maybe if we could configure that uh, to the user, that would be, good. be possible to put like an arrow to kind of tab it. So if you're through one screen of information, then you go to the next one, and then the, it would the jump one down. Yeah. So, so instead of having to scroll, you would just hit a button, and it would do the home or the end of the page. You know where I'm going with that, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's a great idea. I'm I'm scrolling away here because I I want to make sure I record these ideas. Um, yeah, that's a good idea because there is a lot of scrolling to get down. If you could just click, you know, AL batters, NL batters, and it would just boom, go right down to that spot right there. Or, yeah, or, 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 or have the tab so you could have the standings, and then the next tab would flip to the other one so it wouldn't be any scrolling. Everything would be on one screen, just tabs going across too. That's yeah, an idea. Tabs, are, tabs are excellent. The one tricky thing is that you never know how much room is available on the user's screen because you don't. Oh, we don't have different size screens. Yeah. Yeah. So the nice thing about scrolling is you can you can accommodate that. Whereas if you you commit on a tab, then sometimes the tabs will take up half the page and sometimes right. take up all the page. I, I, then, I since since we interviewed you last, I've gotten a new computer, which has a twenty five hundred by sixteen hundred resolution or something. It's not four K, but it does process in four K. And so my screen size is huge, but yeah. in order to stream, I have to scale that back to 1080p. And yeah. it's so noticeable, the size difference yeah. between, and now things are larger, which make my older eyes work easier. Right. But yeah. it's like, it's amazing the difference in the size. So I can see where tabs would be yeah. difficult because as you said, everyone is a different yeah. size screen. Yeah. If you take a look at the, um, <clears throat> if you look at the design of Digital Diamond Baseball, um, any, any screen that, um, when you make something bigger, some pieces want to get bigger and some pieces need to stay fixed. And if you have a fixed position or if you have a, a, a window that actually gets bigger or smaller as their resolution gets bigger or smaller, when it gets really big, you may have just a little information on the top and the rest of the space is empty. And people say, well, you're wasting all that space, but I don't know how much space there is going to be there. So what I deliberately try and do is for places that can expand and contract, I put something that can fill up that space. And a perfect example of that is the play-by-play -play window, right? It doesn't matter how big you get that, there's always going to be text in there. Yeah. And you'll notice that when, and the other thing that can always get bigger is the ballpark. So when you resize the, the window, it's that middle area where the ballpark and the play-by-play -play is that's, that's absorbing that because it has infinite content. Mm -hmm. uh, where the other places stay in re stay relatively fixed because they don't have it. Okay. So um, that is a constant uh, design challenge for sure. Okay. Uh, Bernie had a question here. Uh, it'd be great to be able to print a newspaper style standings in league leaders. It, it, you can print out reports. Can you print out reports in this? You or can do that. You can? Yeah. Okay. you can export them as PDF. Uh, I'm sorry, as HTML or text. And then you can print those. I think the text versions are in CSV format. There's a so couple I think that's other clever idea because you've got we have the the newspaper style game summary, right? Which right. describes it. So why not have one with uh all right, so I go to my reports uh for exporting? Yeah, reports. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I click on my reports. Now is there a standings report, league reports, maybe? Yeah, uh, under organization. Uh the first one on the top. Oh, okay. Um and then standings. I have organization, free agents, awards, drafts, so all standings. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. So I can export that. Um, yeah. I can, can I print? Right. I think there's a button yeah. for that. Now there's options and export. Now is that something that I can print? Yes, it's uh, HTML, uh, and you can print that when it gets exported. So I would have to export, then print? So it doesn't. Yes. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a two-step directly right. from that. Okay. Game. Okay. Other other games. We won't mention any other games, but other <laughs> games give you the ability to do a daily report. Is yes. That something, is that uh, that's something that we're thinking of for twelve or? That was that was on the list for eleven. Um, mm -hmm. it was, they wanted a button that they could generate a, a daily report that they could send out to people, or whatever. It didn't make it, but it's on the list. And as you as you know, during the during the, during the baseball season, we'll continue to uh, push out enhancements once the bugs are taken care of. Um, so I hope to make my way through a lot of the things that didn't make the initial release. Mm -hmm. I think it keeps things fun too. Uh, the games that release and then they don't do anything for the whole year. It, you know, it's always exciting for the users to get, get some goodies as they go along through the year. And Bobby's stopping by to say hi. Thanks, Hello, Bobby. Bobby. By. Uh, Al Red Sox fan. Mark, is there a random card setup? A viewer left him a message. A random card setup. I don't know what that means. Yeah, Al, can you clarify that a little bit? Um, Bernie was asking about uh, a button to click that could switch the game in between different modes, status pro board game companion and digital diamond. It's a good idea. You have to go up to the, uh, up to the uh, options there and play with that drop down box. Um, a button would be nice. Uh, there's a lots of things that a button would be nice for, and there's only enough room for a certain number of buttons. Okay. That's the challenge <laughs> there. Um, where do I put the button? But I, I couldn't agree more that uh, it would be nice to be able to switch through the, through those. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, Native Pangea, is there a feature that allows subsequent seasons to historically happen? Example, you play a fantasy season one and season two begins and the player stats compile season one and so it's season like two. It's like the PDF function now, right? Or is yeah, that that's been? correct. That's Currently, correct. I upload a new season, begin, clean sheet, restart. Okay. So yes, there is an encyclopedia in Digital Diamond Baseball that you can attach to your you can select, create one and select it. And then every time you finish the season, you can just add the stats to that encyclopedia and then start the next one. And your career stats report that you get in the game, it also shows up in the player pop-up. will report those career stats across all of the simulations you've done. How easy, since you've now given us several different ways to play and several different ways to, to do um, season after season after season, how easy is is it for let's say start whatever project I end up doing in, in 11 to go into 12 or 13, you know, because now you're going to be in the process where people are going to want to do long-term projects in multiple years. I'm sure you can do that now, but you know, walk us through that. I mean, yeah. Dave, uh, you, Dave, you imported 10 into 11. Yeah. Right? That's one that we want to talk about. The, I want to talk about the import. Now I brought in 79 from 10 into 11. So I, I can only assume that anything from 10 should play nice in 11, but I don't think anything in 11 would play nice in 10. Correct. You can't go okay. backwards. You can only go forward. Uh, we try to make – we've always tried to make it so that the older seasons would, would port right into the new season. So you could go out and get a, a version 7 and drop it into a version 11. There was a problem with the encyclopedia for libraries that have an encyclopedia attached to it. There's a bug for that that's causing an error. That will be fixed tomorrow. Um, that's the only issue I know of with respect to that upgrade. Um, what was I going to say? There was one other comment about that. Oh, the one thing that you have to be aware of, though, is if I add stats like um, box, which were added this particular upgrade, if you bring a 1979 over into version 12, you're, you're not going to have any box until the date you started playing. So there's some things that we just can't you know, make happen. Right. We can't okay. get the box after they've okay. happened. But uh, um, yes, the uh, the idea is you can definitely continue on uh, with your replay. I think it was Dwayne here. He was playing earlier on YouTube today. He was doing Apple today, yeah. Yeah, he was playing Apple in Digital Diamond. Oh, and, and, oh wow. He, I'd like to see that. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I was playing that too. I, I'm playing the 80 World Series with Apple. Okay. And, uh, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm just putting it. It's just Board Game Companion with it, so I'm just kind of rolling off to the side. But it's been fun. Um, and I want to talk about World Series too in a minute. Uh, but he had a question. He says, cause, you know, Digital Diamonds on Steam. So basically, if you have different computers, you can play it on your different computers that have Steam. So mm -hmm. he was, yeah, I think Dwayne. If oh, you're still cloud? Dwayne, Are we talking about well, cloud here? Well, he was asking if he's playing a game on his office computer, let's say. Now he goes home. Can he get that season onto his home computer or, or two different computers? How would that work? Yeah, that's, good. that's a good question. Uh, the 
the most supported way to do that is to back up the file on your machine that you did, you say it was your laptop, back up that library, put it up on a cloud server. And then when you get home on your desktop, go out and get that and restore it. Okay. Could you and do that with like a, a USB stick or something too? Yeah, you could do it on a USB stick. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. And and so it's the only, the ba- only the backup file. That's all you would need was the backup file. Uh, you would want to have your photos, your player pictures and logos yeah, on okay. both machines, but that's a one time. Yeah. Okay. Then the backup will work fine for you. Steve, um, there is a thing that, Steam ahead, doesn't go. offer any synchronization with it. That's what I was just getting to talk okay. about. Steam does have this thing where if you have it running on your one machine and then you run Steam on your other machine, it detects the first machine and it allows you to play as a mirror. So you're playing on your laptop, but it's actually playing it on your desktop and mirroring the screen on there. Interesting. And that's a little bit wonky. Um, I think you need to have a decent network for it to work well. Okay. Um, but if you do that, then your one machine almost acts like a server and any other ones you connect to can kind of play off of that, that machine. Okay, nice. Uh, we did have um, someone else, um, Southpaw, was, was asking about the, the printing out the status pro seasons and teams in a PDF for hard copies. And you said not yet, maybe, uh, maybe in the next one or something? In this version. I really want to get that in this version. Okay. okay. I got to get these, the bugs taken care of, get it stable. There's a couple other features that are higher priority. But that is definitely on the list uh, at some point this year. I know that there are quite a few because of how you do th- how you set it up with the board game companion and then the status pro. I'm sure you're now getting bugged about draft leagues. <laughs> I it's funny you say that. I've been wanting people to do that, and and it's supported in digital. Oh, is it? See, I, I, I I'm just a replayer at it, but but I know that. I can't get people to do it. Um, and because nobody's done it, it hasn't really been worked, you know, so there hasn't been a lot of testing on it or anything like that, but it's, it's in there. Every time you finish a game, actually, if, if Dave, you bring up a, a picture of that. Every time you finish a game, you can export the, the game to a file and then you can um, send it to your commissioner and they can import it back in. So go to oh, there. Oh, oh. Yeah. All right, so let me go to a game that I've played here in 79. So yeah. th- th- so I can go to box score, let's say, yeah. right? No, no see that, that little that blue uh, thing blue above the box? Oh, this, okay. That exports it. The it game is exported. exported to the exported games folder. Interesting. And then you okay. send that file to your commissioner, and your commissioner's got the same library, but that game's not oh. played yet. And oh, then there's I a see. button to click on and import it back in, and then they can send the library back out to everybody. So theoretically, you could... Dude, uh, see, I see. There's a draft function there, Dave. Pop yeah, we'll, I, I want to talk about that in one second. Um, uh, let's continue with the status pro for one second. I'm going to write down the draft right here, Ron. We're going to get okay. back to the draft in one second here. Um, as we so got six. um, uh, Harold, Harold here says, uh, one quick question. Still a little confused about the status pro baseball and the generic cards in the game. He's an OOT player here, looking for a change. So uh, let's just kind of sum up the status pro here. So status pro baseball in version 11 when you click that option it shows you the cards the cards are generated you know on the fly or whatever it is so you have the pitcher card the batter card and in the middle you have the fast action card so you can play status pro here uh, with any season that's in the game so far am i right that's correct okay now the fast action cards for what i understand are completely random. So you're not, you don't have the actual fast action cards. You have the values and those values are random. So uh, you don't have to flip a card if you don't want to, correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. The only time you need to flip a card is if you're reading a value that you've already read on that card. I started flipping cards and I found it was so much fun that I am flipping a card. That's that's what I've done is, is the flipping. When I told you that 20 minute number or 24 minutes for an 11 inning game, that was with all the prerequisite card flips. Yeah. Yeah. So the card flip too, because the suspense is is there. You need that. You see what I would worry about if I use the same card would be that I will have already looked at a number inadvertently and know what it is. Yeah, he gives it away. I always look at the both of them. I see the PB, and then I see the random number. I'm like, well, that that's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, it, yeah. It, it may be because Harold is relatively new, it should be explained that Digital Diamond is a game all to itself. The board game companion was new last year, and the Status Pro is new for this year. But digital this is the 12th version of the Digital diamond game it is its own independent play any season game that that you want yeah and it's now, a three 
Yeah. Ex- now, getting- Mark, Mark, explain the basic digital diamond game. Sure. The basic game is diamond mine baseball, right? That's kind of what I grew up playing. Um, you, you sit down and you click swing and the, and the play happens for you and you read the play by play and behind the scenes, the computer's generating um, the outcomes. Um, so it's diamond, diamond mine baseball. And um, now there's this new idea where you can play with any board game you want and enter what your board game tells you what happened and digital diamond baseball records that. And uh, Status Pro is just one of those games that you can play that turns out to be built into the game so you don't have to print the cards out or buy any cards. Yeah. Now, the Status Pro, so the cards are right there on the screen. Uh, you do include the uh, the public domain charts and instructions. So when you download the game, there's a folder called Status Pro, right? Yes. So some people ask about that. Well, you know, you do need charts and stuff, you know, the, unless you know the game by heart or whatever. But, you know, there's the CD charts, the rare play charts. You got your, um, you know, you're bunting and you're stealing. It's, and I have a little folder here with all the stuff I printed out. So you do get all the literature when you when you get the game and it's in a separate folder wherever you've downloaded the game called Status Pro. So that's where you're going to want to go to print out whatever charts or files or instructions you're going to need. So the mm-hmm. game is baked in, but you will still need the instructions in the charts, which are included in the download. The so only, hopefully that clears that up a little bit. The only thing too. missing is the cardboard smell of 1986. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, let me see here. Uh, Al Red Sox fans ask, can the box scores be expanded to be made larger? Uh, in which direction? Uh, all the way around? Um, uh, I'm thinking font size. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yes, the I'm, I'm yes, wondering, I don't know which way you would go. I'm wondering if he's thinking, well, if I click on a box score. Okay, let me, let me see. Do I have the screen up? No, I don't. Let me put the screen back up. Um, so that's technically a box score maybe is that what he is that what you're talking about al you want this to be a little bit bigger so if i go to the newspaper box score yeah because that, that could be yeah that could be bigger but you so can export this you know and and do what you need to do with it um there's something uh, there's something that uh there's a feature maybe not people don't know about if you go to the options dave uh, in, in the box score i uh, know go to the options in the game so back to main menu and then the uh, library options on the left. Yep. Okay. And then click on UI interface, user interface options there. Click on that. See that number there, the base font size? You yep. can increase that and it will change the size of the fonts on all screens except for the play by play page. So just for fun, you try making it like 50 or something and you'll really notice it. All right. So let's make it um, 36. Okay. Now enable auto scaling. Do we want that? That is, off? that is useful. I leave that on false. That's very useful. If you have one of those really high resolution screens, Okay. What that does is it'll make the font bigger so that your screen is more readable. All right. So these the other okay. fonts are bigger. Yeah, they are much bigger. Yep. And, and I believe um, that will make it bigger on the, um, so let's, let's go. The, so let's check a box score out here. And okay, oh, this is all bigger too. Oh, yeah, God. it's all I'm kind of liking cool. that. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, I'm kind of liking that. So here's the box score, and um, it is yeah. it, yeah, the fonts are bigger. I'm gonna leave it's a that. lot easier on the eyes, uh, for, for, for so so Al, you, I don't know if you can make it bigger, but you can make the font bigger. I put it on 36, yeah. and you can see how uh, everything is really, yeah, you can see everything yeah. here. And so, that doesn't uh, affect the play ball page. Um, there's a different mechanism that tries to increase the fonts so that it looks better on your resolution. But it works on the other, all the other pages. Okay. Um, getting back over here. Uh, let me see. Um, right there. Is there a reason why you move the AL and NL East teams to the middle spot of the standings and move Central to the left? <laughs> it's. I believe it's sorting them by alphabetical. Okay. I think. And um, the alphabetical is great when you have leagues that aren't um, – AL or West East Central, uh, somebody makes up the leagues, the divisions, then you maybe want them to be ordered uh, alphabetically. But for East West Central, they should be Central East West, and that that can be easily fixed. All right. So what is it? That's Al something the user can change. No, that's something that I I should okay. fix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Al says cards for play is using uh, the DDDB game engine. The lower the rolls, the better for the pitcher. The higher rolls, the better for the hitter. And the yes. viewer believes the percentage would be the same, but no longer in that order. I'm not sure what that means. 
Oh, uh, I think you might be talking about the shuffle shuffle feature that we are trying to get into the game, which shuffles. Oh, would that, would that be to mix it up so it wasn't just straight good for one side and good for the other? Yeah. So when you're okay. when you're playing, um, you would a, a zero to ten would not always be a, a bad roll or a strikeout. That might oh, be a home run. And it was working. Uh, so you could pl flip an option, and then that outcome thing would have shuffle results, and you wouldn't know what the dice roll was without looking. And but I found a couple of bugs in it uh, about a couple, maybe two weeks before release time. I had to pull it back. Um, so we'll get back to that and try and get back in there because it does make the regular version of dice rolling for, with Digital Diamond Baseball more more exciting. I had to chuckle at this right here from Native uh, Pangea. Good luck with 2023 with 90% rare plays, strikes called on slow runners, ejections of catches for not <laughs> getting the umpire ball. <laughs> yeah, that's been so. Yeah, it's going to be all, all you guys are going to have fun next year trying to figure out this season. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Are there um, any plans to. Uh, had the library go back further than 27. I know that Sly Bell has worked to get some of that stuff and you can do the Lehman database, but you know, if someone wanted, let's say if someone wanted to make Dave Gardner really happy mm -hmm. and wanted to take like a 19, 19, 1911, which is what he's yeah. doing in another game. You know, a, I got a customer, Ed Summers, who, um, who's responsible for those, those 1920 libraries. And I think even maybe some of the thirties, okay. um, the problem is that the data is not all there in one place. Um, so you can go out and put them in layman and, and, and for that, you might find out that half the players don't have uh, caught stealing numbers. Right. Um, and, the, and the as played lineups, only half the players are in the lineups um, and other, there's other issues and it takes a tremendous amount of research. And I, you yes. know, I, Ed Summers goes out to, to newspapers and he reads the box scores to figure it out. Um, and and uh, and he's built those libraries, and it took him, you know, a couple of years to knock those out. Um, and they just gave it to the community, um, and it's up there for free. Uh, so he, I don't have the time for that. Um, so it's got to be from oh, the you. Yeah, uh, but if anybody does it, it immediately will go up there for everyone to have, and um, that's the policy. When Digital Diamond Baseball first came out. Uh, that was how all the libraries were to be made, would be made by the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, but as it got easier to be made, uh, I could make them quickly. So I did it. Some of us have been around long enough that to have a past season in OOTP, you had to have a, the Lehman database to build it. Oh, wow. Do you that. remember? You, did, did you know that? No, I didn't. Like, like the first five versions that came with the current season or, or and all the physical stuff that goes with it. But let's say in 2002, you wanted to play 1978. It had the Lehman database as part of the download and then chugged through it and made it on the fly. Oh, wow. That. And That's so, nice. yeah, that was, um, yeah. Nice. Uh, Bernie chimes back and he goes, uh, by the way, we're making a lot of suggestions. With that said, version 11 is brilliant and the best value for computer baseball games available. Just want to say thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, yeah, I tell you one thing, you know, we talked to Mark a couple of times. Uh, he takes us all in stride. You know, he does the good and the bad. And, and it's mostly good. But uh, I, I think he knows that we're all excited here and we want more. And that's what we do as game. We want more. When we see something, we love it, but we still want more. We, you know, and, and we'll never be satisfied. And I, I think you just got to kind of take that and just say, you know, OK, I get it. We'll, we'll never satisfy everybody, but it's still a fantastic version. Everybody yeah. is pretty happy with it. Uh, so I want to just have a comment there. He's th people are thanking me, but. But really, th this is a, has been a very customer-driven effort, right? Um, so it's it is that that desire and passion that you just talked about that makes the game good. It's not me. It's it's the customers and their ideas. Um, I, I wish I could do them all. I feel terrible when I can't, but I can't physically do it. But th thank you for giving me all these ideas and helping make the game so good. Yep. Uh, Richard asked here a couple things. Such a great addition to uh, his baseball sim world. He played so much status pro in his late teens and early 20s. So thank That's you, cool. Mark. Yes. I really am amazed at how well and how easy we picked that up. Considering that it is completely just a different style of game from anything else that I never you know, played those it. of us who did the cards and dice all those years ago. Okay, we're putting those away. It's yeah. all fast action cards. Yeah, yeah. It is kind well, of payoff pitch has fast action cards too, but it's not, it's different. 
Very it's different. Like yeah. 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 Fast yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It just doesn't work quite as smoothly. Yeah, we, we were talking about that before the show, really? me and Ron. But I yeah. pulled it out and I was trying to play. It's like, yeah, they don't, it, it's it's not all or nothing. You still need a lot right. of things to play that game. So. And Andy Lewis has turned a lot of baseball games that are cards into fast action flippers. Yeah. He did that. Oh, with, is that right? With yeah. Greg, the our, our departed friend, Greg Sovian's uh, roster card oh. and some Ooh. of his other games. You know, wow. I was playing last year, I was playing using the board game companion and his flipper to make that game work. So I'm not wow. completely foreign to it, but, but yeah, it's, it really is a whole different thing to go to one way style of playing to trust yeah. the card. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely fun. Uh, Todd says, uh, is the randomizations of the card patterns used in uh, digital diamond that you spoke of still on the table sometime this year? Okay. I think he's talking about the shuffle feature that we just talked about um, uh, that didn't make it in. Absolutely. It's funny because okay. Like a lot of people were sad to see that go. Sad not not to see it in the in the first release here. I was just as sad as you were, if not more. That is one of my favorite features, and I was very bummed out that it did not make it in. Um, so I I have a my own personal desire to have it there as well. But um, first, we've got to stabilize version eleven, uh, and, get, and there's some other things that are slightly higher priority. But uh, it will be in version ten. I, I will try my best to get that into version 11 uh, this year. Okay. Uh, Tim says he loves digital diamond. It's been a game changer with card and dice replays for those who want to play that way. One little nitpick question though. Uh, why does Sony please uh, wait delay screens between I, screens? That's a good question. Um, the architecture of the game is client server. So when you're playing the game, there's a server running on your machine it, and it's fielding, um, requests from that client so that communication between those two processes um causes that please wait it was done that way because i was i wanted to create it so that you could have a, a cloud version where you could play and it would talk to a cloud server and um and it, it actually can work that way and there was a while where there was an ipad version of this that actually used that um still that, still written in java right yeah well yes both were written in java but in, well, no, the client side is 100% HTML JavaScript and the server oh, okay. Java. So I had a Java server running and then the client on the iPad was HTML based. And you could play it and that, that nobody nobody wanted it. So I stopped supporting it. But that's why it's talking to that server remotely. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Al Red Sox, the gamer engine works fine. Mark Clear for the 82 Red Sox is still a heart attack. <laughs> Uh, I was playing Ryan, Nolan Ryan from 78 today, and he's in status pro, and his control number is a six. Wow. Two to six. Yeah. Wow. It's in, and he's pitching against Mark Keo, who somehow is a seven. So <laughs> Ryan couldn't get a roll on that card, and Keo could, yeah, just one of those things. <laughs> uh, see, did, did, uh, did you add the rare plays from the Z table in status pro to the board game in companion to, uh, to version 11? Uh, I, I believe you have to print out the cd in the in the rare play table right you do and uh, bart that's a good question yeah you do have to print it out um one of the things about these these card games is their rear plays are wacky and um no uh, kidding <laughs> the, the board game i'm trying to have a lot of commands that can handle these but i i can't handle them all so a lot of times you get a random play you can't implement or it's one that you didn't want like an injury i don't like playing with injuries Ah, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just but I, but I did notice that you know to talk about the command sheet. It was six pages last year, seventeen this year, including yeah. the example. And again, you have things in there such as soft drives, medium drives, deep drives, rain delays, rain outs. I, I mean, we yeah, can well, tell what you is yeah, what is the the hard you know hits? Talk um, in the, the, the metal the church, thing, Dave. The thing to remember is that. Um, the traditional game engine that doesn't use any cards or anything like that, uh, it is using those same commands now. So in the, the traditional engine, when you hit a ball, it maybe hits soft, medium, or large. And that determines what happens on the bases. If it's a deep fly ball, then there can be a tag up. So that's a hard fly ball. If it's a soft ground ball, it maybe it could be an infield hit. So the, the game engine needed the ability to specify the contact velocity of those hits. And since it's using the same built uh commands that had to be added to the commands as well okay um, 
Bernie's a happy guy. He increased the font size from 10 to 36. <laughs> he can see the front. I didn't think to change that either. I mean, that's why we do these things. We, we, yeah. the, ver that. the version released for the 12 year olds will have an eight size font. Think <laughs> big, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. We did have a question here. Another one for Todd B. Uh, did the ability to enhance the play by play make it into this version? Yes, um, it absolutely did. That was spent a lot of time on that. There's a great video on that in the user guide um, that shows you how to do that. It's now very easy to add your own calls. You can add calls that are specific to a player, oh, wow. specific to the home team or the way team. I went in the other day for a demo, and I went in and I uh, – who did I do? Um, did you put the greatest hits of Ken Harrelson in for all the white slots? You can do that. You can definitely Be do that. gone. <laughs> Richie Ashburn's call. Stretch. Um, now, can you can you put – okay, it's your game. Yeah. Can you put anything you want in that play-by-play? -play? You can, anything you want. And you can share it, too. You can export that little thing and give it to your friend. Are you thinking of doing it the OnlyFans version there, Gardner? Oh, I'm just thinking if a guy drops a fly ball, he really – F that up, you, you know, that but you can do long. that, right? You can have some yeah. fun with it. Okay. Absolutely. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I hope people take advantage of it. I spent a lot of time on. on it's its own that. separate application is when I installed, right? When I installed it's, it, it popped up as, oh, play by play editor. And, and you're the only thing that I'm beta testing at the moment. So, <laughs> <laughs> or, so it's its own separate program, right? It, well, it's, it's actually an, a button on that main menu. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but it, it, you know, it's a separate interface. It allows you to browse through them and create new sets. You can create your own sets. So you could have a New York Yankee set, and you can apply that to. All right, well, let, let, well let's take a look at that real quick then. So yeah. we're going to go over here to play-by-play -play editor. Now, I'm not going to yeah. screw up my season by doing this, right? No, no, absolutely okay. not. The, the thing about the play-by-play -play editor and the chart editor is you can always reset what you've done. All right, so I have default mode here. Yeah. Um, so I suppose the very I top, if you look at the very top, there's two active sets right now, default and default more. Okay. Those two are read only. You cannot change them. That prevents, prevents you from screwing everything. Oh, up. good. Uh, That's yeah, great. Good. Yeah. So and I would go first, new, new set, new set. Yeah. Or du duplicate set. Uh, du you, you can do duplicate set. Yep. That's a good way to start. Okay. So I'll duplicate the set and we'll Let's just call, call this. Yeah. We'll call this a uh, Dave test. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now you have a new set, and this one has been populated because you duplicated it. It was populated with the default set, which has the bare minimum of play-by-play -play calls. Okay. Now you can click. Let's go to home run. So go to that call type drop down up above, down a little. Yep. Choose home run HR. Okay. Click on that. So check ID like like yep, this. Check and then do. Uh, well, we can change this one as is. So click on edit. We will go to uh, edit. Right. Okay. And now you can change that call. And there's just a few things to know. The, the tilde NL tilde is a new line. And you should start your, your commands with a new line because that's what um, puts it on a new line. All right, so, tab, tab it over one. Okay. So let me see. So I do I go? To, I'm going to leave this so I can yeah. add more. So do I hit return? So I'm at the very end. Do I hit return? Uh, you can. If you want it to be a return, you would put a new line there. Oh, so, so, so I can continue on. Tilde, this one. LNL, tilde. All right. Do I need a space after the, the exclamation point here? No, you, you don't. Uh, you okay. can put one. It won't hurt a thing. But okay. you can do a tilde, NL. Right, so, so tilde, tilde. capital NL. So it's a new yeah. line. Yeah. And then uh, two more tildes? Uh, yep. Yeah. Tilde, tilde, tab. Tab. So type, the word, type the word tab. No, you sorry. got to type it in. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. All caps. Yeah. Yep. And That's then my tilde. favorite. That was my favorite drink back in the day. That was good. Way. And one more tilde. So and they that... left it on the key Windows keyboard just for you, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So I so I've I've done tilde NL tilde tilde tab tilde. So now I would put in um, whatever you wanted. All whatever right. Want. Um. So. So 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 right now I have swung on a high drive to, and deep going back way back to the warning track. Gone home run. So um, uh, so can I just put um, see you later. Yeah. And and then three dots. Sure, or... an exclamation point at the end. That, or yeah, the dots are usually kind of to lead the you the player off. Each one of those new lines ends up being a little pause in the play by play to add set suspense. Okay. So that's all I would need to do, and I would save, and that would show yeah. up at some point. It would if you hit okay. save there. Um. 
So now if you go up to the top and choose the activated playsets and uncheck the default and default more and check yours instead, now yours is the only set. So that's the only home run call that will be used in the entire in your entire so what, so what I have down here at the bottom, right? That's right. Okay. Right. It would take, yeah. yeah. It would take those, okay. And if you now, wanted to add another one for variety, you would check it like you have, and you would say duplicate checked. And then you could type a different call for another home run one and a different one and a different one. And, it, and then you'll have variety. But right now you've got one, so that'll be the one that'll be called if you do a home run. Now, so it's not going to do any of these other things here that, I, that are down the bottom? Oh, no, yeah, it'll do that whole thing. Okay, okay. But so if I get another I one that says, holy cow, that ball was hit hard, that could be your second call. And then you can okay. create a third one that says, watch that baby out of here, and that would be your third one. Yeah, so, so okay, so we do uh, uh, a, a tilde and then new line. and then No, you don't, no, no. Dave, it, it'll just keep putting on what you got there. It's not a separate call. Yeah, so say, that's right. So do save on that one. Oh, wait, wait. All right, so let me back this up. Okay, so, so, okay, so what did I? Click on save. Oh, okay. That's basically where we were. Right. Yeah. And okay. now go and click on duplicate checked. Duplicate checked. Now, what are we doing here? But Okay. So we're. Yes. And now you've got another one. Oh, and I you, see. And so you click on that other one. Right. And then no. you can put a whole different call there. Okay. So you can take out, see you later and put. So what is but so, so these other ones here swung on a high drive to location, mm -hmm. um, uh, in deep. So these these are still pop. So I'm not sure what I just did because I couldn't just keep adding to this. No, you could. Uh, here's the best way to do this. Uh, so um, go out of this and go to a, a game. Okay. Start a game and let's just make it a home run, and you'll see what you've just done. All right, so we're just going to do just a couple of teams here uh, and uh, board game companion and set the lineups and just play ball. Okay. Because so I'm trying to follow, like, what happened with all the play-by-play -play here. Yeah, this will make sense to you, I think, right right after you do this. All right, so let me um let me change the font over here. Yeah, good idea. Fonts and color. Make that bigger. If I can, maybe not. Uh, yeah, font size, feel the font, play by play by play font. We'll make it the largest. Okay, so hopefully we can see that a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna swing and just put in home run, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so here we go. So the pitch is on its way, swung on high drive to left and deep. Kemp going back, way back to the one track, gone. Home run for Royce. To see you later. Oh, I see. So it puts all of them in there. Yes. yes, and those new lines put them on a different line, <clears throat> which gives suspense if you're playing not in lightning. You see one line. Oh, I time. see. That's okay, so that whole there. that whole thing comes up. That's right. Okay. So then, if you duplicate it and you do another one with different stuff, then I can change all the. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense now. Make it a different one, and just notice that the things like batter and location are replaced with the batter's name and the location. Okay. So those are tokens that get substituted for when the play-by-play -play comes right. out. Okay, so that whole thing appears. I get yeah, it. Yeah. So you could you could just put the pitch it's on away and it's gone. You can yes. make it short too. Yeah. Okay. Holy cow, gone. Um, and then you could or, or you, you could, could do the home team visiting hits the home run. It's gone. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Home run. Yeah. No, that's home nice. Run. Okay. Cool. I, I like that. Um. Uh, okay. Well, Harold said his cat is watching us on the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get Emily out here, you know. <laughs> uh, L Red Sox fan, uh, could you explain the shuffle feature? Okay, sure. Um, in the traditional game engine, there is a initial outcome, which has, I think, eight things on it, strikeout, uh, out, um, hit by pitch, and so on, single, double, triple. And that is arranged from top to bottom, from strikeout all the way down to home run. And inside each of those rows is the dice roll range that would produce that outcome. And because it's set up that way, the poor outcomes for the, from the uh, batter's perspective are always up top in the lower numbers. So you know if you rolled a, a, a 10 or a 20 or a 50, then you know it's going to be some kind of an out. And if you rolled a 90, 90, 965, you know it's probably a home run. Always. Okay. The idea behind the shovel shuffle is to shuffle those rows 
so that the home run might be a 400 to 428 and the strikeout may be a 97 to a, a 970 to a 999. And it would shuffle each time the batter comes up. So you never know what your dice roll is. In oh, two so it's not fixed for. Yep. So oh. a lot more suspense because you roll the die now and you see a one at 120. Yeah. You're like, damn, not anymore. When you so the shuffle. percentages don't change. It's just a right. visual thing. So a 448 might be a triple play once and then a, a triple itself exactly. the next time. That's exactly but, right. but you you will have the option to go back to the other one because sometimes I, I I like to know high is good, low is bad, or vice versa. Uh, and sometimes when you play those games, I, I get the suspense aspect of, of the dice roll. But sometimes, you know, me my OCD likes consistency sometimes, and so I like to know that a ninety nine is going to be, you know, either really good or really bad for somebody. Whereas you know, if, if it's going to change all the time, some, sometimes it, it messes with me a little bit. So. I, I agree. I agree. With you. And look, let's look at these games that we play. Most of them, you know, what's happening right away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Status pro, you see that random number, you know, it's going to happen. Right. It's a 78, you know, you're out. So very few of these card games allow you to do any kind of show. Although, although I've had a few times where, because the home run and the strikeout number are right next to each other and the batter starts. <laughs> And so, and you don't know what that's going to be. And yeah. so it's a 35 and yes. I'm looking down at the card and the home run is 26 to 34 yeah. strikeout 30. Like, oh, he swung for the downs. You're right. You're right. right. But yeah. um, any other features outside of the shuffle that you're hoping to put into this version of the game? I have a, I have a massive list. Um, I, I mean, I, people don't know how many suggestions I get. I think I had, 480 or something whoa wow yeah so um that's why i, I can't get them all in but uh, right they're all on the table and i prioritize them and right. i and so I do like that dave's on... dave's first and ron second that's right you yeah. got okay. Ron's first <laughs> i pray i prioritize by wearing the a vermont part. hat gardener okay <laughs> <laughs> new england baby that's right um i i prioritize them by the number of customers who have asked for it the ease in which it is to implement and put into the game. Um, and so it's a very long list. Um, uh, and I don't know how long it'll take and I don't know how far I'm going to get. And I, I know that when we talked before, you were hoping that yesterday you'd had the cold beer and I hope you enjoyed the next 10 years of Trey Turner <laughs> because Trey yes. Turner, when I covered the nationals, Trey Turner is, was such a joy to, to watch day in and day out. Yeah. Um, have you thought about the next version? Have you thought about what you might try to do for, for next year? Or are we still just enjoying the the, the, the champagne from being done with 11? Um, I think for me, honestly, there there aren't delim uh, delimiters between the versions. Right. Um, because I'm, we're always upgrading throughout the season. Right. So what's going to be in version 13, which maybe we'll skip because that's bad luck. Or no, version 11, version 12. What's going to be in version 12 will be whatever is left on that list. Right, okay. And that list over the next six months is going to go from 400 to, to 612. Right. But I'm just, if you just, you know, like, geez, you know, I'd like to get this in, but it's going to take months to get this right or whatever, and this is a perfect thing to, to fork right. off for, for right. That's why okay. Status Pro came in as a, a, a new version, and that's why the charts and the play-by-play -play editors and um, uh, those all came because those are big projects that I need months to do. And that's a lot. That's a lot of changes. From I mean, yeah. the cosmetic ones having the stats now in, featured on on the game screen and the buttons to for to pinch hit and pinch run. I mean, those were all huge unto itself. But you've, I mean, it's a night and day difference between the two versions. Yeah, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. But the, the truth is, I, I, it's fun. Obviously, I, yeah. I enjoy, I, I like to program. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hobby of mine. Uh, it's just fun. As in previous versions, can you play the 2023 season in real time? And if so, can you use as play lineups? Uh, we can play it in real time. You cannot use as play lineups. Uh, the Aspay lineups are uh, importable into Digital Diamond Baseball from Retro Street form, Retro Sheet format, but it does not work with uh, Baseball Reference format, and that's mostly because Baseball Reference gives you the Aspay lineups by team, 
So you'd have to download 30 of those every time you wanted to do that. Right. Um, but definitely you'll be able to replay it with, um, without the as paid lineups and uh, it'll work the same way it has in the previous years. Okay. Uh, let's see. got a couple of questions here um, for myself. A World Series. Okay. I, I was setting up to play in, in APA the 1980 World Series, so I imported 1980. Can I go and set up a playoffs immediately? Or do I have to sim the season? Because I think I ran into some issues when I tried to play the World Series right off the bat without playing a single game in a season. You can do that. Um, you should go to the, uh, the uh, postseason uh, page. Okay. And you can build a tournament structure in the postseason. And you can pick up, you know, you do it by round. So you set up the first round. You play the game. It'll build the schedule for you automatically. Um, you can specify how many games. And if you're playing a seven-game series and somebody sweeps, the first four scheduled games will stay. The last three get dropped from the schedule. So it adjusts for games that don't get played. It's designed specifically to be able to create playoff tournament-like games without having to play any other games. Okay. So let, let's do, so I, I'm opening 1990. Oh, no, he's doing that. Is there a limit in how many teams you can do in a tournament? Could you like to do a 256 or 128 team tournament in this game or no? I think that the largest is 64. It's still a lot. I think I'm not, don't, it's either 32 or 64. Okay. I think. Because there are some people who I've seen do 1,500 team tournaments. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. I could see that being a lot of fun. I, I could see that being very confusing, but it could be <laughs> a lot of fun. All right, Steve. I, I, so. I, I think I froze up here. It's trying to load a season. Still load 1990. I didn't think that was a big season to load. But, um, if you're a Reds fan, it's a huge season to load. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we uh, we locked up here, so I'll I'll refresh Can you right click on it? Can you right click on it? No, I'll show you show you what I got here. Um, so this is where I am, and it's been okay. sitting here since. Can I you hit. right click on it anywhere? Click reload page. I mean, I've been bouncing, bouncing all over the place. It's trying to load my 1979. Hopefully, it didn't. Uh... It won't. Cra it won't break anything. Click right. Click on it again, and do a go back, and see what that say. It's missing a team in 1990. No such a, table team. Do a right click again. Go back. One more time. Eventually, you should get back. It could be. Is this a library that you've had up for a while? No, I just I tried to open. Uh, you tried to install it. Yeah, SQL era. Oh. oh, were you in the middle of a game? No, no, I wasn't. I was on the main screen. So let me go back, back over there. here. Yeah. All right, so Ooh, we got an error. It's like something crashed. Something's took. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll reopen that. that. Um, but but anyway, um, so so I so you can open a season and just go right into the postseason and you, you go right to the postseason place and then you can st manually start it. Yep, I think and I did that. Set yep. up all your brackets and so on. If you have played games, there's an auto one where it will suggest who should play the playoffs. Oh, so you can auto pretty much auto populate a playoff. Yeah, it will auto populate it for you, um, and it also gives you the standings with. Uh, uh, so that you can handle tiebreakers and wild cards and stuff like that. You're on your own. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it did not bring in 19. I'll try a different one here. So let's try um, something a little bit easier here. Let's try 1966. And we'll try to bring that in. Oh, boy. Hopefully I didn't mess something up here. I love this game. I'm wondering if my server, if the server didn't crash or something. That's never happened before. I doubt that. Yeah, this one's not loading either. It's Did not as bad as Bill, Bill Gates getting the blue screen of death when he was showing off Windows 95 to the world. <laughs> Dave, close out the game and then don't reopen it. Have you I done did. that? I did, yeah. And I'm trying to load 66 and I'm having a problem It's right stuck. Now. It, it's stuck. Close out I the think, game and then reopen it. I just installed it fine. Um, I it, This is more of a, an indication of maybe a network problem of some kind. I know you're on, you're on the internet right now. So did you think you'd be okay? I've been opening five I've been opening seasons. All right. Till this point here. Yeah. It's, it's something happened like almost to the network. 
for the game. Hmm. Can you open the library you already have on there? Um, I'm gonna try right here. It's it's still doing this right here. So let me um, let me stop sharing right now, and um, we'll come back here. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's get to the, a couple of questions here while while I kind of cycle back through. Maybe I just got to exit Steam or whatever, you know, and, and come back in. Um, is it possible to take like say Roger Clemens and put him on the Cleveland Spiders? Yes, you can do that. Okay. Uh, so you can bring players in from different years and. And, yep. and move them all around. Okay. And, yep. and that would be what they thought was that library options or something like that, or um, what you can do to bring players over is there's a, a feature in the player editor that allows you to import players from other libraries. So you would install the, the season you wanted Roger Clemens from onto your li install that library. And then you would go to that player editor and say, import from another library. You would pick that library and it would list all the players on that, on the Boston Red Sox. You pick Clemens and say go, and it'll put it in the, the library you have on your machine. Okay. Uh, what other questions that I have? Is here? it possible to create a player? Yes, you can do that. There's um, one way to do it is to go in the player editor and enter all the information for that player the name, the stats, the positions, and so on. Another is there's a feature in Digital Diving Base, but it allows you to randomly pick any player in some other library and put it on your team or randomly pick one, change their name, and put it on your team. So that's a quick way to Thinking create. you're going to get Babe Ruth and you get Mario Mendoza instead. That's right. You'll get Mario <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> um, so there are definitely ways you can type them or generate those, those two players. Yeah, and I'm still can, not opening and, seasons here, so the, I must have a, a big issue going on. Yeah, I, yeah, it's almost like a computer reboot. Yeah, I might have to do something like that. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, so, and the new rules for this year are in there. So the Otani rule is in there, and you can change that. And what were some of the other, or some of the tricky yeah. things about putting in all the new rules? Obviously, pitch clock won't really matter in a, in a yeah. card and dice or a game like that. So, what were some of the tricky things about getting in all the things that baseball's done over the last couple of years? Yeah, Obviously, was, universal DH is easy. Yeah, that was easy. Um, the Otani rule was a real pain in the butt, and it still has a few quirks in it. Um, it, it works, but certain situations where you have to go out and take them out and put them back in or something, uh, that was difficult. Uh, the runner on second was one that we had to do uh, for extra innings. Um, there was the uh, three, three, three batters face. Oh, the minimum for the relief pitchers? Yeah, yeah that had to go in there. That, uh, the computer will always take the pitcher out, will not take the pitcher out unless they face three batters at the end of the inning. But the human manager, it's up to them to follow that rule. Okay. And if you don't like said rule changes, such as ghost runners or minimum batters faced, you can disable that and play it any way you want, right? Correct. There's a bunch of rules that go back in, back in time that you can turn on and off as you please. So, okay. you, um, Dave, do you need to do a reboot? I'm not going to reboot the computer tonight. Okay. No, I'll, just, I'll just kind of, you know, I, I showed off what I could. I can open a library. I just can't go and install a new one for some reason yeah. right now that's what that's doing is it's going out to my server to pull down that library and there's a problem with that communication between your machine and my server i did it on my side and it worked fine but there's something wrong with that network contact between the client and the server okay well may maybe it's just because i'm on here or maybe i just need to reboot because i've been i've been yeah. bouncing all over that program so i, yeah. I gave it a good workout okay. but I, I, would, I wouldn't have destroyed any of your libraries and you always okay. back up You've got nothing. Yeah, about. Uh, I just bought version ten, not knowing version eleven was about to drop. I bought it strictly for the cards and dice companion. Do I really need to throw this away and buy a new version? Is there that much of a difference? You can, uh, um, you can, you can uh, return version ten, no questions asked, to Steam for a full refund as long as it's within two weeks and you haven't played more than two hours. Um, so you can get your money back and then get version eleven. Or you could keep version 10 and not get version 11. Um, that's your call. Either way is fine. Okay. Um, let me see. Can you tell us where we can download all the digital diamond libraries? Um, the, you can install any of them directly from our server by using the install a library button. So that's not, so that's not automatically on our computer. That's correct. That's why I think Dave is having trouble is it has to go out and get that file. Um, the, 
And then there are customer created libraries that are uh, digitaldiamondbaseball.com under the customer created libraries. There's some really fun ones, alternative ones there. There's an all women's uh, league. There is a, uh, a uh, one library that has fictional baseball players from popular movies about baseball. Um, there's all kinds of fun li libraries on there that you can download from digitaldiamondbaseball.com. Can you do custom schedules? Yes, and that was actually another a big update in version 11. Uh, version 11 uh, redid the schedule generator so that it was a little easier to use and a little more powerful. Okay, now we want to circle back to what Ron was talking about earlier with, with drafts. Uh, and, and, I, and I had that same question. So, it, it, you know, could I say, let's open up uh, the, all the players from 1980, let's say, but I'm only going to have four teams. And I just want to have four. So we'll have the best of the best for those four teams. Is that something I could do so I could create a four-team league, four, four teams, and then draft from, say, 1980? Is that something you could do? Yeah, definitely. So you, you can open a library, whatever teams are in that library. You can release them all to the free agent pool. And then you can create your teams and go to the draft page and set up your draft. How many rounds do you want to go? The computer can pick or you can pick and you can choose. Uh, and then you can work through a draft. And when you're done, you've got your teams populated. Okay. So for if you wanted to look up. Oh. I would need to pay my respects to Mr. Cohen. Of course, the greats of our hobby, Uncle Dave, Uncle Ron. Thank you so much. Thank Just you. got home from Lone Depot Park in the Mets uh -huh. with a good win. So um, congrats to our RJL on a big win. Very yeah, the Mets are off to a flying uh, And start. he said he downloaded version 11 two nights ago. Very user-friendly. He likes it so far. So Great. Okay. Excellent. Uh, now, um, Texas Ags, he, he has played more than yeah. two hours of version 10, so he might, yeah. Well, yeah, the other thing I can say is that um, as the year goes on, there, is, there are several sales that happen throughout the whole year. Um, so if you want to hold on to 10 for a while and wait for one of those sales, you can get, you can get a, a decent discount on the game at that point. Uh, Richard said he hasn't been able to install 1990 either. So oh, maybe weird. Let's see if I can do 1990. There might be something going on at the server, or you know, maybe 1990 is Jose Canseco has taken over the server. The Reds just cannot out win that World Series. <laughs> so I can um, install 1990 without any trouble. So there, there's some, it sounds like something is going on, but I am not experiencing that. Um. So if someone wanted to do like a co-op an online league or something like that with the draft, is there a way to have a commissioner password so there isn't any funny business and monkey business with that? Because I know that in the early days of OOTP and these, that people could hack those files. How, how did that work? So you, you would you would sign the file, the password, and then only the commissioner could open it up? And only the commissioner could open it up. That's interesting. I because what that. would happen in the OOTP leagues was that they were – transactions could be changed oh my gosh yeah like who the hell would want to cheat in an online i was just league anyway? thinking that i mean but, talk about competitive <laughs> yeah um there are certainly lots of uh third-party products that you can use to sign those files uh many of them are free so i would probably point people in the direction of those okay tools. um because one of the things you can edit in otp is injury length and of course, uh -huh. so if you have someone that's on the 60 day DL or out for the year and all of a sudden they're pitching in a game. Yeah. Bye now. Yeah. I, I was unable to open 1990 in version 10 either. So it, it's not an 11 thing. So there's something else that I'll probably have to reboot my computer to, okay. to okay. get a nice refresh going on here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's good. That makes sense that it would be uniform. Okay. Uniform. Okay. Ton said it's a great bargain. For having that many seasons, yes, it is. Uh, Texas Ag says, "Because uh, I'm sure if version 11 was a big upgrade." Well, again, you get you you get um, Status Pro, yeah, built built into the game. If you like that, um, you get the new look on the screen, so you get that there as well. So there are some big 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 changes in here. Big differences, but if you just bought it and have your own cards and dice anyway, it'll you'll be, be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, you could have a. A heck of a lot of fun with version 10 for sure. And, yeah. you know, you can ride that for a long time and keep your eye for the sale and you should be able to get version 11 for what better. is it retailing for right? now it's 20, 24 99. And okay. uh, right now for the first two weeks, I think of release, it's 15% off. Okay. Okay. 
Um, I'm trying to think if I have any more questions here. So we, we solved the World Series things. You do not have to sim the season. You can go right into the World Series and, and pick that up from there. Um, and that's, that's not going to have any issues that you haven't played any games, so it's not going to... Nope. Yeah, that's one of my fun ways. One of the fun ways to play is for me is to just cut, set up a big tournament, and then I pick a team. And if that team loses, I pick up the team that beat me, and I run through that whole tournament. Okay. Uh, as we talked about the backwards compatible issues, you can go forward, but you can't go backwards. Okay, so we talked about that. Uh, we talked a little bit about the status pro in the game where it's, it's built in. The cards are all built in. Right now, you cannot print them, uh, but they are in the game. And you do get a folder with all the instructions and the charts on how to play status pro. So that is, you know, it's all inclusive there, but you do excuse me, have to print out the stuff there. Um, we talked about, oh, yes. So I, I won't be able to do it here, I don't think. But uh, so I brought in 1899. And so I, I want to say how I did. So you go into, if you want to bring in 1899, which is not in the game. So you would go to what? Create a library. Yep. Create a library. Yep. And then you would, so you would create whatever, call it what you want, 1899. And then you would go to that library and you would what? Import. Yeah. Import from layman. Import from layman. And then that would bring up the season. Yep. And you would import. That, that was layman already on in the program. Yeah, we have a, I have a special version of Layman that has been modified to have split stats in it as well uh, for seasons where it exists and a few other uh, uh, niceties as well. And that comes with the game. Okay. 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 So then I will actually, so I got all the teams in. Uh, it only gives you the one default field. So you will have to create fields for everybody. And I'm going to do a video on that. I think I'm going to show how to create fields and, and bring them all in. Because I did all that with 1899. Uh, you bring in your own logo, set them all up. The only thing is I don't know about the team colors from 1899. I have no <laughs> idea. You know, but that's okay. Uh, and then uh, I went into the schedule editor, I think, right? And yeah. I imported the schedule as well. Yes, you did. Yep. Okay. And then you had to remove the as played lineups. Yes. Get rid of as played. Yep. And then and then when I was done that, I imported from the layman file 1899. I uh, went to the schedule editor. You read it as played, imported the schedule for eighteen ninety nine, and basically I was done. I'm ready to play eighteen ninety nine. Right. Yep. yep. So you can bring in uh, other seasons with that layman DB file, which is uh, which is really really great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Gary says here, uh, going straight to the World Series, uh, you might have to set all the players active since transactions did not happen. Yeah, that was that. I think that was the one thing that was messing oh, that me would, up. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. There's some prep. We were supposed to add. That's one of the things that did make it as a button that says prepare this library for postseason. And what that does is it, it will activate everybody. Um, and it also changes, would change your team profile so that instead of trying to make sure everybody plays as much as they played in the regular season, they make just the best players get picked. So in the playoffs, you go and you play your best players. You don't have does, to worry about Does the game assume that all postseason would be in October? Um, no, it could be at any time. Okay. But that button doesn't exist. So you have to go and do those two steps manually. Uh, so, so what were those two steps again? So I would have to go to activate all the players on no, the now where, where would that be in, on That's the individual in the team? View, browse, view and browse rosters. No, view and browse players and make roster moves. It's on the main page. Okay. That's a button you click on and that get, allows you to look at the rosters for all the teams there's a button up top that lets you activate all players. Okay. Okay. And then everybody's will be free to play in the postseason. Okay. And then the next thing you want to do is go to the team profiles, pick any team's manager profile, and choose to choose choose the option to have players picked based on ability, not based on their usage time. Okay. And you would apply that across all teams. There's one button that'll apply it across all teams. Okay, and then and then you're all set because then the computer manager has all the players at once, and it'll play the best ones. Okay, and uh, Texas Act back again. He's loving version ten. He'll think he'll wait a while, then he'll get eleven. He's also customized uh, some of the ballparks in the fifty-five and seventy-nine seasons. Um, he do has he does has all the cards and dice. And so good, yeah. So he's Great. enjoying. Good, yeah, good. if you like it, I mean the stat the status pro thing. Is, is huge but if you got yeah. what you have already then, then i love version 10 i did yeah. you know and yeah. and i'd still be doing that right now but with version 11 it, you do have the option for status pro a couple little graphical things here but for the most part version 10 is is absolutely fine it, it's it, yeah. no issues at all 
And which is I have a lots and lots and lots of customers who are always one version behind. Hmm. But your version, always, yeah. the, the price goes down for the old version. Right. And they're always one version behind. When version 11 came out, they bought version 10. And when, when version 12 comes out, they'll buy version 11. Now, that's a lot. That's good. I, I can yeah. understand it, but that's. Yeah, it, it's got lots of functionality. It's fun. And they save $15 every year. So, sure. That's great. Yeah. I've done that sometimes that there's been something that's been out and I've never played it. I'll grab an earlier version just for like for a handful of dollars just to try it. And yes. then it's like, oh, if, if I like it, then maybe I'll get the, the new updated whoop yeah. 51 here. But you know, sometimes you just want to have an idea, you know, yeah. unless unless it's, you know, you go way back and it's a completely different game. But right. yeah, sometimes you just want to have an idea, yep. you know, what it yep. is. Um, so anyway, uh, all right. So, uh, folks, we're going to wrap up here. If you have any more questions here, get them in right now while we have Mark on the line here and we can uh, talk to him about his new version 11 that come out on Thursday, I believe it was and um, having a lot of fun with that. A lot of people are using it. Um, I know I'm, I'm playing so many different baseball mm -hmm. games now. It's revived my baseball cards mm -hmm. and dice. Uh, I really am, am enjoying it. Um, immensely the status pro is kind of fun sometimes late at night you don't want to pull out too much you pull out the status pro i just got a couple of chats on the side and then you play the game and you know and and so it's it's fun that way too is, is bernie bernie strong is collecting a list of all the baceball games out there that exist both oh gee because he's got and wow. the, the, the cards and dice and computer and i think he's up to 72 oh my now, god obviously the computer ones you really couldn't do unless yeah. you did the board game companion but yeah so technically, you could play your game with seventy-one other games. That's crazy. That somebody should make that a a, a challenge. Uh, is that button a global button to make it active for all teams? Yes, you can do that in the um, view players and make roster moves. Um, there's a button up along the top right that you can click on, and one of the options is disable all players, or or it's. Or activate all players or deactivate all players. Okay. Uh, let's see, Texas. Uh, no, if you buy 11, you do no. not lose 10. You have them both. I was just bouncing back between the two. Um, so you but will it, not but lose it's 10. Not like, it's not like Strater Action PC or the others. It does not overrule the others. So they're two right. separate programs. They're two separate programs. But keep in mind that if you are playing in 11 with a season, you can't bring it back into 10. Mm -hmm. But if you're playing in 10, you can bring it into 11 as I did uh, with 1979. So mm -hmm. it is, is very good that way. So um, I think I have all my questions answered that I had for you here. Um, and uh, yes, it is very nice. Yep, you don't lose anything at all. You have them both. Um, Ron, any, any, any final thoughts here before we wrap up here? I think I got them all in. Is there anything that you've thought about specifically for a feature for 20? well that you're tinkering with that you'd like to i mean obviously to, if you to, since it's april fool's day and you bought app on a day congratulations you know no no seriously is, is, you know is there something that you're already thinking of geez this would be nice to to do um i'm kind of i'm cheating here i'm looking at my database of all the things that well, i have of course. I, it's, it's an open book question let me see if i can find one um, I'm not guaranteeing that this would be in it, but you go like, oh, you know, something that, you know, who the beta process, I mean, the shuffling, I think, seems to be the big one from the community that you hope to get in this time around. But, yeah, but for 12. Joel asks a quick question here while you're thinking that over. Where's the best place to download images, logos, etc.? All over the internet. Um, Sportsreplays.net. Sportsreplays.net is there. Uh, sports logos. Dot com or dot net has a bunch of logos there so yeah just search all around and and you do i believe my correct me is i believe when you bring in any kind of images or logos you have to have them in the digital diamond 11 data folder appropriate folder for logos and ball boxes. i think i was trying to bring something in from a different folder on my computer and it wouldn't do it That's so it correct. does have to be in the digital diamond 11 and then i think the subfolders digital diamond data files and then the subfolders are like logos and ballparks so you do have to have them in that correct folder so you just can't have them scattered on your hard drive and I, bring them in from anywhere just gonna, gonna say that my all my computers have understood that there are seven or eight different versions of the same 1978 hanging red sox logo yeah. <laughs> yeah. For all the different folders yeah that's right <laughs> well i tell you the um the logos uh 
there is somebody on our in our community forum who has a, a collection of I think over 750 logos and digital diamond baseball has an auto find feature so if you just drop that folder on your computer it'll automatically find the right fo logo for the right team for the oh, right nice. year uh, and there's logos that look like caps there's jersey logos it's nuts and he you know you can get that from our forum if you go on to that community forum. Oh, okay is that the tapa talk forum yeah tapa talk okay. forum it's uh sly bell who's who's got those files and um they're a game changer when it comes to um okay. to that sort of thing i'm still looking through here um for a a, a big change and i'm I can't find anyone I would pull out here. So. Okay, no, that's fine. I just wasn't sure if you had thought that far ahead to go. Gosh, because again, the shuffle, you know, I think you'll be able to get in. Uh, you're hoping to get in this year, but go and yeah, that would know, be. Is there something that came up late and said, "Geez, this would be nice." I like, no, I, I it's going to take too long to get it in here. Yeah, I, I mean, I have. I'm looking at the when I look ahead to the future. There's over a thousand ish uh, uh, things in the list. Oh wow! Um, wow, yeah. yeah. So, it's it's just a lot of stuff. It's, yeah. In in this version eleven, what was your favorite thing to make it into eleven? Oh, that's a good question. I think it was probably the the um, the chart, which we haven't talked about. Um, changing the charts that the board game actually uses um, would, would be my favorite. Um, okay. I, and I don't, I don't think anybody, any of my users would say that, which is why it's important to listen to your customers. But I, I don't think they'll find that the best. But that was my favorite. I think changing uh, is the parameters of of gameplay. Yeah, We're talking about know, the digital diamond part of of the yeah, game, not anything. exactly. And and it were really, I've always wanted the game engine to be transparent. And this is, I've reached the goal now where it's absolutely one hundred percent transparent, where you could play that you, what the engine does you could replay that engine with dice and charts on your own so I, I think it that is one of the reasons why i really like it the other reason i really like it is that now that it's done it's very easy for me to change how the engine works so when i want to make an upgrade or fix a bug or whatever it's much easier for me yeah. to, uh, to so if we printed out those charts how would we combine the cards because there, that's how digital demo works that's right it, the charts pick up after that first outcome so the first thing you do is you roll three 10-sided die, and it tells you whether it's an out, a, a single, a double, a triple, a hit by pet. Okay. And then based on that outcome, the charts come in, and you do a couple other dice rolls to find out what the ultimate um, result is. Have you, have you done video on that? Or? Uh, yes. There is a video um, in the, game, in the uh, user guide under new additions to version 11, and that shows you how – the chart to work and talk walk you through that. Nice. And one of the new things for version 11 is that when you open it up, you can't click on the user guide. It takes you right to the Steam Yeah, page. yeah. And that's all what the you videos want to that you've done so far for this yeah. for the game. Yeah. 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 Bart here was asking, how easy it, is it to import Dead Ball Seasons? Well, again, click on that user guide and scroll down to the import feature. That's how I learned it. And I got 1899 on my computer. And we talked uh, about it about what, 15 minutes ago or something like that. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you would go into, you know, create your season import, uh, the, the players, I, th I think it is, you know, the teams and, and then you would input the schedule. Now it won't have as played, but it will set it up. So you at least can play it. It, yeah. it is, it is available there as well. Um, I have one more answer to Ron's question. My second favorite feature is status pro. Okay. Second status. Pro. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian asked, uh, are there instructions for importing seasons? I had started in version 10 into 11. Um, you, it's easy to bring over your library. You would do create a backup in version 10 and then restore that backup in version 11. And from that point on, you can continue whatever tasks you have to do in order to complete that season. Would that be something that would be implemented in the future that you'd open up, hit a button in the current game and it would read through your old seasons? Yeah, and, and import them all over in one shot. Right. Yeah, that, that would be a very nice. Let's see, now you just, I thank you, Ron. I'm going now from 1047 <laughs> to 1048. <laughs> My wife wouldn't be so, honey, did you do this? Shut up, Ron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. All righty. Uh, 
Will, uh, thanks. Mark, Damon, a quick question. Would you ever consider putting in voice play-by-play? Ah, right. So that's been asked for a lot. Another thing I also get um, suggestions for, requests for, is animation. You know, ball animation. Right. And such. Um, yes. I mean, I can definitely see that happening at some point, um, but it's it's not high on my list. Um, I'm not good with animation, uh, so I'd have to do a lot of learning to be able to add animation. The voice libraries... Um, I suspect the ones that work well, you have to buy. Uh, here's a here's a story. Um, someone in the community asked to use my voice, ah. and, and but it's a legitimate story, Gardner. Are you done yet? I'd be done by now if you weren't doing it. <laughs> um, and so he he's good at mixing sound samples through and he's. Uh, with real broadcasters and stuff. So he asked if he could use my voice and I said, sure. So we opened up with a sample of, of my traditional, you know, the following is a live presentation, blah, 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 blah. And then he paid for an AI voice to mimic mine. And <laughs> you heard that Dave, right? Did you watch that video? Some of it was spot on. Some of it was, was spooky was, because it was kind it, of robotic. It, it, yeah. it was robotic. So there was no inflections or anything like that. I'm scared to see what they're going to come up with in their five years in that technology, yeah. but it's, it's, it's working its way there. It's some um, Mr. Wrestling two or two. three. Mr. Wrestling two. Yeah. And it was a game in PC replay oh, that funny. he did with my voice. And a lot yeah. of it's just very generic, but it's common. It's That's common. Crazy. Yeah. That's cool. That stuff's a lot of fun. The animation of voice is a lot of fun, but when I have that list, it, it never it never comes up above yeah. these features that that make gameplay better and accuracy right. better and, and yeah. it never bubbles up. And to do that, that would be, you know, that would be three months or four months of work yeah. that I could have put ten new. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's yeah. priorities you got to make yeah. there. Yeah. I, when when I play, I don't even look at the play by play. I gotta, and most people don't. Yeah. I create it in my head. Now it's nice that it's there because sometimes I will say, okay, let me make sure that you know I put in the code right and this guy went to okay, yeah, it looks good. So I'll yeah. use that as kind of a you know, just to kind of confirm what I put in in there. But a lot of times it's like, okay, I, I'm playing my game and it's a single, okay? It's a single to the left field and I don't need to read that it's a single to left field. You know, I'm glad it's there. Uh, but a lot of times I, I don't I don't use that myself. I think you know? so if you were playing the original game, you'd want that there. Oh, yeah, because you don't yeah. know what's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. where it makes exactly. a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, when you're doing the commands, it doesn't make sense. Really. Yeah, I know that the Action PC has the the windows voice read mm. uh, in there and, and uh, what i use it in the hockey which is fun because i i use it as the stadium announcer because it'll be like goal scored by number seven phil esposito and, and i'll use <laughs> yeah. that as the stadium announcer so yeah. when it, when a goal scored i'll use that as like hey let's get the let's get the announcement on the goal so that's what i use it for from time to time and that's that was cool. kind of fun but i mean it's it's more you know it's more fun than anything, but it's not a, yeah. it's not, I don't think that's a top priority thing, but, yeah. but if, if, if it would read, read the play by play in the, in a, in a voice of some come kind, yeah, maybe I would leave it on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, but yeah, so that is that. So uh, uh, Mark again, that you've made it on the show twice now. So that's thank great. You so this is so much fun. I really appreciate it. Well, yeah, we appreciate it. Yep. We're going to start a lounge for when people we have people on the third time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want virtual beer. Is there a way to do that? There you I go. Know, right? <laughs> I know, right? That's the way to do it. But, uh, you know, congratulations on the re release of version 11. Um, I'm glad that, you know, Ron and myself were able to, to help uh, with some just yeah i mean um and, and we kind of had a two-prong attack going as, as i was coming at it from this angle and ron comes at it from that angle mm -hmm. and i'm and i'm just like i just want to make sure that everything i'm going to play in the game works as i think it should and yeah. and that's kind of how i went in and runs over here hammering nails and trying to pull slats out to, to see if he can break the game on his end and he yeah. come up with a few things so uh, hopefully we were helpful and i, I do help. what what has been the reaction to the visualization stuff because that's new this year too the graphs you know, I, I was really excited about that i, I like i like them but I, i'm not so sure, sure uh, the jury's still out on them with the customers okay okay 
But all righty. So, again, so you can get Digital Diamond Baseball on Steam. It's version 11. It's out now. It's ready to go. You can play Status Pro Baseball on there if you like. The cards are on the screen, all formatted and ready to go for any season that you have. Uh, you get a folder with the Status Pro instructions and charts in there, so you can play the game. That's how you would play it. And uh, you get, I, I like the new screen. The, the The field is smaller, but you have a lot more information on the screen, so you can so you don't no longer have to click to to call anything up to see what's going on with that player for that day. It's all listed up. The pitchers over here as well. Oh, one other thing I did want to ask you: um, the pitchers. I noticed that there's um, a number and then a slash in another number. So it's like 98 slash 67. Yeah. Is that is that the the pitch count? Yes, it is. The first number is uh, what their uh, tolerance is before they're fatigued, and the second number is how many pitches they've thrown in that game. Oh, that's or in some okay. cases, it's also if they can start in relief. It's their starter yeah. number and then their relief number. Okay. Yes. And then the third one would be number of pitches thrown. Yeah. So the game kind of, even when you're playing board game companion, it kind of simulates how many pitches they've pitched pitches they've thrown right definitely yeah the, and the pitches that it simulates are based on real pitch data for that pitcher really okay yeah so so a pitcher that that uh, is really um, efficient you know like a, a greg maddox he's gonna throw less pitches um so it's it's a very accurate way to track fatigue and whenever i play a board game with digital time baseball i don't use the, the game's fatigue system yeah it's a very I, so that's what i i go rough pitch count and feel once i see it start yeah. to creep up and go okay i do i do like having that there i i like like Ron, i go on feel a lot because i play different games and everything's different and so i use I keep that as a guide. The game I'm playing, that's a guide. I keep Digital Diamond Baseball. When he starts to show uh, orange and red, that's a guide. But I do like having the, the pitch count there now It in the batter count. It's something else I keep an eye on. Ron always says, you know, go, was it 27 batters? I yeah. Yeah, Five runs, 10 hits, 27 batters. Yeah, yeah. and then you're kind of like, then you're kind of fatigued or whatever it is. But I, but I do like the pitch count there because that, that's something else to keep an eye on that kind of feeds into my own way of doing fatigue. You know, if I look down, it's like, boy, he's, he's really up there in pitches or he's really up there in batter's face. Maybe it's time to pull him out or whatever, but uh, yeah. So that's what that was. I wanted to ask. Mark, the best compliment I can give you is that you allow people to play whatever way they feel most comfortable with, without being playing a computer game. That's not tied to however the computer game wants to set up the rules. That's the nut. That is the number one goal and has been the number one goal for digital Dime baseball since version one. And, and you, reason, have, and you have absolutely succeeded with that. The, the reason why I did that is because I knew if I made a game, I was going to have a billion people telling me how they wanted it to work. Exactly. <laughs> and because I, everyone has, especially in this kind of a game. So I knew from the beginning, it's not going to be a fun ride if that's not a goal and that has always been a number one uh, goal. Yep. Thank you. So anyway. well, thank you. All right. Uh, Mark, hang on. We're going to sign off here, but we'll uh, talk to you for a minute off the air. Uh, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, uh, as we talks version 11 of digital diamond. Uh, I, I guess say I played digital diamond 10 and the board game companion sold me on this thing and, and I'm playing more baseball on the hockey guy. And I'm playing way more baseball now. And, and, and Mark, so I just going to say, thank you for this game and the board game companion, because it's allowing me now to dig into my library of games and I'm yeah. playing. I just bought back the basics uh, from Downey games. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm playing that with your board game companion and yeah. I'm playing a season or whatever. And then I pulled out app and I'm playing the 1980 world series using your, your companion to keep the stats. So I, I'm playing strat. I'm playing, I, I'm playing six or seven baseball games now that I might not normally play. Yeah. But now that I, I can have this here and I can keep my stats and I got my box scores and I'm a stat guy. So I really like that. So, I mean, you, your companion has really, it's really opened me up to playing all my, my, all the games that I have here and even more games. And it's, it's just been so much fun. It's done the same thing for me. I'm having that same happiness and, and, and appreciation for these games that were just sitting in my shelves. Uh, yeah. It totally. It resonates so much with me. I totally agree. Yeah. We need, we, the only thing is we need you to make a hockey one. 
<laughs> and I think I talked to you about this last yeah. time too. If I did anything, it would probably be a um, a basketball. I'm yeah. more of a basketball fan than a hockey fan. Because I was, you know, advertising that we we're going to talk to you tonight, version eleven, and you know, so in some of my hockey circles, people are like. We need a hockey board game companion yeah. like Digital Diamond because you can play any game, and there's nothing like that for hockey right now. There's a couple yeah. of things that are somewhat close, but if you want to play, you know, whatever hockey game is your favorite, you got no way of really in in a game tracking stats and have the computer play the other games. It, yeah. it, it doesn't exist. That's unfortunate. You know? Yeah. That's so. Unfortunate. Yeah, so and, I'd have to learn more about hockey to do that. That would take me a while. <laughs> so, all righty. So, again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Mark, stay with us here, and uh, I'm sure we'll have you back on for version 12, which will Anytime. be in about uh, what a year, <laughs> a year from now. <laughs> it goes too fast. That's right. All right. So, I'm Dave. I'm Ron. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.